I decided on an RV documentary in October for my film study at Evergreen and then began the channel Nomadic Fanatic officially on December 6, 2013. The rest is history. Tilly's in a wrecking yard. Oh, Tilly was towed to a Panama City wrecking yard. Didn't make it out of Panama City. I, I think a page called Eric the Nomadic Fraudmatic. About him raising money for a documentary he never made. There's stuff about a lemon RV he sold to an elderly couple. Everything you've ever said about me is true. I'm gay. I have three children. I spent seven years in prison. I prefer chicken nuggets and tater tots over steak. Well, he was cooking chicken strips and tater tots when we met him. Oh, money. When we first asked about funding his life and whether or not he has a job, he just said he used to be a cook at several different restaurants. But how do you afford gas, food, like the basic life necessities? Here he is again from YouTube. I'm a con man who bought a cheap $627 solar panel, even though I ended up raising over 3000 In that documentary about living the nomadic life, he created an Indiegogo campaign and asked people to donate. He raised more than $5,000. And commenters want to know, where did that money go? That's another thing we asked in the follow-up interview. Right, right. I mean, I guess that's a good point. There are several people out there who would be like, you know, hey, I think that we gave this money to do the documentary, and where is it? And you're a fraudster. You know, you're a scammer. You, you, know, you, didn't, you didn't do what you said. But in the end, as far as the legality issue, I mean, I didn't give a time frame. I never gave a finish date. I never said what would inquire it to be finished. So the point is, once you make a donation of any kind, there's no requirement and you don't own a piece of the documentary. I his ex-girlfriend, Jada Nielsen, to get some insight into what Eric was like off video and to find out if he did just run off with her RV and their cat. But Jada wasn't willing to talk with us. She did, however, contact Eric to let him know we were trying to talk to her. He sent us a message saying that she doesn't trust easily. Apparently, Eric's internet fame has caused some problems for Jada. His haters also reference his alleged criminal record. And that, we can find out about. So we did. It ranged from suspended license to Class B felony for burglary. When we asked Eric, he at first said no comment, and then added, but I will say this, if you find one on there that is a restraining order from one of my exes in like 2004, that one is me. And that is still, I think it's a Olympia. Uh, yeah, got, got, got a restraining order put on and uh, it, it went like two weeks or something like that. And then she didn't renew it. So that'll always be on my record. I'm never going to argue that. Um, well, in high school, I had a girlfriend who... Um, had written a love note to another guy and uh, sh that guy ripped up the love note and then another girl handed me that love note and I had that note and she got really mad about it and was basically trying to rip the note out of my hand saying it wasn't mine and we got into a pushing match and then four hours later uh, cops showed up and said Eric this girl says you choked her and it was like the hell are you talking about like I said, it still exists there in paper. You can still find a temporary restraining order under my name. So After we ended the Facebook video chat, we were thinking about everything we had said and realized some things just did not add up. In 2004, the time of the two-week restraining order that he said happened when he was in high school, if he's going to be 35 on June 5th, which is what he told us, then he was born in 1981. And that birth date checked out on his records. Meaning that in 2004, he would have been a 23-year-old high schooler so unless he was held back for a few years, pretty unlikely. Add on the fact that the restraining order never showed up on the background check we bought, and which he confirmed was his after he found out he changed his last name. I changed my name because um, I thought it was hard to pronounce my last name, and I thought that it would be more convenient to give, to move my middle name to my last name. Fessed up to the other charges, but never denied them either. Illegally parking my RV on campus and spending the night. Two purchasing an RV with financial aid money. I have done some stuff that was probably technically breaking the rules, okay? I have done those. What? Stuck. I'm working a lot of angles right now. Try to start at 10, noon, two, three, four, and five o'clock. Just won't start, to just, there's just no spark or something. Thank you. To its new owner. 
You guys right. take care. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Good luck. Got the full asking price. No test drive. Tilly's in a wrecking yard. Something's wrong with the transmission? Yeah. Transmission on Olga. 50 stickers that I have for Nomadic Fanatic. These are not the match. I'll film it because I'm apparently making this all up and I don't really need a transmission. My RV runs just fine and I just want money. That I already said I'm paying for it myself. <laughs> I'm paying for it. I just won't have any gas money after this, after I do it. Um, to finance the purchase of the new transmission in Olga, I've had to take out three separate private loans from friends and family. That money comes from my gas fund and travel fund for next month. Well, the rest of this month. So, uh, I'd love to be able to sell my stickers and postcards and finance it, so. And has a criminal record and steals money from old people. Where does your money come from, Eric? And I'm a homo and I like wieners and I'm a con artist and all that. Over 40 probably over 45 jobs in my short life so far. They just never last. How I make money living in, in an RV on the road. And today, as a special treat, I get to show you firsthand exactly how I make money in my RV. Your home improvement connection, C.R. Boger. That's why my work could be called um, a radio commercial jingle writer and singer. Uh, a lot like what Charlie Sheen did on uh, Two and a Half Men. What kind of RVs I've lived in before living in this one, kind of uh, what the difference between those RVs and the kind of the path that led me to be in the Tioga that I am now. So up until about 2009, I was always a tent camper and pretty much only when it was nice outside and in the summertime. But in early 2010, I upgraded to a Ford Explorer as my commuter and I began to camping more, but still in tents. In spring of 2010, my ex bought a 1978 Dodge Vogue Class C motorhome. It was surprisingly a good RV, and we only used it twice in two months. So we sold it two months later to be able to afford some maintenance on the Explorer. We broke up in June of 2010, and I used my summer Pell Grant money to buy my first RV. I found a 1979 Toyota Dolphin on Craigslist for $2,200. I then bought a 1988 Ford Club Wagon van, and I was living in the van in less than two weeks from the time I moved into the room for rent. For a 1984 Chevy Aviator straight across after driving to Seattle to make the deal. I thought it was a terrible 1972 Comfort Travel Trailer for $2,000 in Yelm, Washington, in the barter section, titled Truck and Camper Combo for Trade for a Pull Trailer of Equal Value. It really seemed too good to be true. Currently living in on October 1st, 2013 on Craigslist. On the set. Camera speed. Sound production, take one. My name's Eric. I live in the Pacific Northwest, Washington State, in uh, Thurston mm. County. I'm a, mm. I'm a boondocker. I camp. Mm. I live in my RV full time. Mm. And most of the time I am boondocking, mm. living in uh, parking lots, mm. truck stops, mm. state parks, the free campgrounds when they're available. Mm. And from time to time, mm. I can also snag a friend's driveway. Mm. Um, I have some big travel plans mm. coming up in January. I'm going to be traveling mm. from here, Washington State, mm. down to Southern California to Slab City, the infamous mm. last free place on Earth, or last free place in America, at least. Um, also, mm. I travel with my cat, Jax, who mm. is sleeping right now. Mm. And I'm sure you'll get to know him pretty soon here. Mm. Hoping to talk about everything from how much mm. propane I consume living out here on the streets mm. to um, how I take care of mm. showering, bathing, uh, where I work out. Mm where I park, how I, how I deal with notices on the window that say, we're going to tow you in 24 hours, how to deal with the police when they stop by and say, what are you doing? Um, washing clothes, garbage, where to fill up propane, where to get free water in Olympia, yeah. Uh, um, so the question, why do I choose to live in an RV? Why do I choose this lifestyle? The last few years I've been watching a lot of YouTube videos, similar people who live this lifestyle, and uh, there's a lot of people that think they just can't do it. They just... They have a family, they have a job, they already have a house and car payments and all this stuff that's, like, tied them down. And they just physically can't do it. And, you know, me thinking about that, you know, being a 32-year-old guy, I have a cat. It's about the only thing. Um, right now I'm not working, I'm just going to school. But I really don't have anything tying me down to one place. I just feel the exact opposite of the way other people feel. I mean, I have no intentions of 
buying property in a house. I don't understand why the American dream to buy some mansion and then expand and get a pool and buy and put a baseball field in the backyard and have all this debt and then buy four cars for the family and then pay those debt and then have all these credit cards that have all this mass debt and pay that and pay taxes and you know it's just ever expanding you know I just never understood that concept you know getting married I don't even understand the fact of getting married you buy some cabin or some little kit those little shed kit something put it on somebody's property well it's stuck there it's not mobile I like being on well I'm on six wheels but I like being on wheels um the same thing goes with buying a house you know people brag about oh I'm a homeowner now I own a house no, you know, you don't own shit. You just tied yourself down to $2,000 payments for the next 35 years of your, and you're burying yourself so that you can't even dig yourself out of this hole in the future. It's not the American dream. It it's not the American dream. It's not the American dream. Let's go find a hooker. Just look at their amazing life. Safe, secure jobs, social respect and admiration, a growing family, home ownership, new model cars, and a gourmet kitchen. Yes, the Joneses are living proof that if we're willing to follow the same trusted path. What the f- Show them who the beach bum is. I live in America, the land of the free. But am I really free at all? Working and slaving 50, 60 hours a week just to trade it all away for monthly living expenses to fulfill this American dream. The American dream. <laughs> what is that? Who built this system of norms that I have to follow in order to feel free? Call it dependence. Call it addiction. Call it whatever you want. Got 60 bucks. Let's go find a hooker. What? The world around me is pushing for faster, bigger, newer, comp and convenient surroundings, while all I want is a smaller, slower, simpler, self-sufficient, real life. I've always had a constant desire to be on the move and rely on no one for my survival, the exact opposite of a costly apartment life. I wanted to be in control of my life and my circumstances, so I sought out an alternate path, one I could construct based on my own needs. I took the plunge. I bought a motorhome. I sold all of my furniture and every possession that I wouldn't be able to use on the road. I loaded up my RV and went on the road full time, determined to keep my cost of living low and meet like-minded nomads on this new journey finally underway. Walmarts. They're all over the country, and many allow overnight parking to RVs passing through from town to town. So far, my routine is just the same as in my old apartment. Jax wakes me up just as the sun begins to creep in. He's hungry, and he won't wait any longer. I tap into some free Wi-Fi internet from the coffee shop across the street and check my email. I'm driving my entire home with me to Bellingham to sit down with an internet van dweller I met on YouTube. Chris has been living in a van, traveling all across the country. Sometimes settling down for a few weeks to earn some money. Gas to get to his next destination. Camping is very popular to many boondockers. The convenience of stores and supplies nearby can create a desirable environment. But I knew this scenery would get old quick, and I was excited to get away into a more primitive, off-grid, natural setting. Washington State Department of Natural Resources. Now this 
is freedom. Sometimes I bring out the guitar. Dear penis, I don't think I like you anymore. If I'm forced to follow these strict set of guidelines, how can I say I'm free? Talking with all these nomads on the road makes me feel less alone about my ideas and lifestyle choices. Plenty of people think outside of this dream stereotype. Maybe there are people out there who are completely happy with the cookie-cutter American dream. I know where I am today. I have no idea where I'll be tomorrow. I am perfectly happy on the road. Every morning I wake up and get to see something new.